In the previous lecture, we have discussed about monitors and we have seen an introduction to how monitors work. Now, in this lecture, we will be discussing about the dining philosopher's solution using monitors. So, we have already discussed about the dining philosopher's problem when we discussed about semaphores and we saw how it was solved using semaphores. But we also saw that the dining philosopher's problem's solution using semaphores also could lead to deadlocks. We have already explained why that happens. So, in this lecture, we will be seeing how we can solve the dining philosopher's problem using monitors that will present a deadlock free solution to the problem. So, we will be illustrating how monitors can be used to solve this problem, ensuring that there will be no deadlocks like that was caused in semaphores. So, this solution imposes a restriction that a philosopher may pick up his chopsticks only if both of them are available. So, we are going to solve this problem by imposing the restriction that a philosopher should pick up his chopsticks only if both his chopsticks, that means both the left and right chopsticks are available. So, I hope you remember what was the dining philosopher's problem. If you don't know that, please first go and watch the video where we have discussed about the dining philosopher's problem. Okay, so here we are going to solve this problem by imposing the restriction that the philosopher should pick up his chopsticks only if both of them are available. So, we saw that if all of them picks up one of the chopsticks at the same time, then all of them are left without the other chopstick. So, that was one problem that we saw when we were solving it using semaphores. So, we will make sure that in this solution that we present using monitors, they will pick up the chopsticks only if both of them are available. So, in order to code this solution, we need to distinguish among the three states in which we may find a philosopher. For this purpose, we introduce the following data structure. In order to code the solution, we need to distinguish among the three states in which we may find a philosopher. We know that what are the three states that a philosopher could be in. He could be in the thinking state where he is just thinking and not interacting with any of his colleagues or he could be in the hungry state where he is hungry and he wants to pick up the chopsticks for eating or he could be in the eating state where he have picked up both the chopsticks that are adjacent to him and he has started eating. So, these are the three states in which a philosopher could be. So, in order to code this, we have to use the following data structure where we have a variable called state which is an array and why are we using an array? Because we have five philosophers. So, state of 5. That means we have state 1, state 2, state 3, state 4, state 5 which will represent the respective state of each of the philosophers. All these philosophers they could be in either of these states. They could be either in thinking state or hungry state or eating state. So, this is one data structure that we are going to make use of. So, a philosopher i can set the variable state of i equal to eating only if his two neighbors are not eating. So, a philosopher i he can set the variable state of i equal to eating. So, what is the meaning of state of i equal to eating? So, we have declared the variable state here. So, state of i will represent the state of any particular philosopher. So, a philosopher i will set state of i equal to eating only, what are the conditions? Only if he has both the chopsticks. And when will he have both the chopsticks? He will have both the chopsticks only if the two neighboring philosophers adjacent to him are not eating. Only then he will be able to get the two chopsticks that are at his right and left. So, what is the condition that we need to check? We need to check the state of both the philosophers who are at his right and left. So, we say that here state of i plus 4 mod 5 is not equal to eating and state of i plus 1 mod 5 is also not equal to eating. So, what does this mean? State of i plus 4 mod 5 and state of i plus 1 mod 5. So, this represents the state of the philosophers at his left and right. So, why this calculation? I have already explained when we discussed about this dining philosophers. So, I will not be repeating it. So, this actually means the philosopher at his right and philosopher at his left. So, we are checking if the state of the philosopher at his right is not equal to eating and also the philosopher's state at his left is also not equal to eating. So, if both the neighbors that are adjacent to him are not eating, only at that time he can pick up the chopsticks that are at his right and left and start eating. So, these are the two main conditions that we need to check. And also, we need to declare a condition variable self where philosopher i can delay himself when he is hungry but is unable to obtain the chopsticks he need. 
So this condition variable self is the condition construct that we talked about when we discussed about monitors. So here for each of the philosophers they need a condition variable which is called self. So this is needed when he needs to delay himself when he is hungry but is unable to obtain the chopsticks he needs. So there is a waiting state. So at that time he needs to use this condition variable. So these are the main things that we need to declare in this monitors for solving this dining philosopher's problem. So this is one thing and this is the other thing. So we'll be seeing how the code is written in order to solve this. So we'll be discussing the code and we'll be seeing how it is solved using monitors. So here is the code to the monitor solution to dining philosopher's problem. So this is the code we have. We'll be discussing each and every line and we'll be understanding what this means and how it works. So first of all, let me tell you, when a philosopher is hungry and when he needs to pick up the chopsticks and eat, he needs to call a function called pickup. So pickup is the function that he needs to call for picking up the chopsticks. And after he finishes eating, he needs to put back the chopsticks. So for that, he needs to call the put down function. And then there is a test function here which will be used to test if the neighboring philosophers to the philosopher who is presently hungry are eating or not. So only if they are not eating the hungry philosopher will be able to get the chopsticks. So that is written in this test function. And then we have the initialization code. So that is the brief introduction. Now let's go into the details and let us understand how it works. So first of all this is a monitor. So we have a monitor data type. We call it monitor. And then this is the name that we give to the monitor dp so here you can give any name that you want so here let's just assume that dp means dining philosophers so we are just giving this name which can be anything and then here we introduce that data type which we just saw in the previous slide which is enum thinking hungry eating state 5 so why is this because we have five philosophers each of them could be in one of these states either thinking or hungry or eating so for that we have declared this variable and then we have the condition self. So why we need this self also, I have already explained. Okay, now let's say that a philosopher wants to eat. So when he wants to eat, he has to call the pickup function. So let's say philosopher i wants to eat. So he will call void pickup int i. So I will represent the number of that philosopher or the index of that philosopher. So philosopher i wants to eat. So he calls his void pickup. So his state is now set to hungry state of i is equal to hungry so philosopher i is hungry and he needs to eat so when he needs to eat what does he need to check he need to check the states of his neighboring philosophers who are at his left and right we have to check whether they are eating or not so for that we will be calling this test of i function so here test of i is called so when test of i is called we come to this function over here this is the test function so when test of i is called here we are going to check using this if condition over here so it says here if state of i plus 4 mod 5 is not equal to eating and state of i is equal to hungry and state of i plus 1 mod 5 is not equal to eating so what does this mean so this means that if the philosopher at his right is not eating and also if the present philosopher that means the one who has requested the fork or the chopstick is hungry and also the philosopher at his left is also not eating. So these are the three conditions that must be fulfilled. So we know that philosopher I's state is hungry because it was already set here. So this will be true. And if his right and left philosophers are both not eating then these two conditions will also be true. So this if condition will only be true if all these three conditions are true. So if all the three conditions are true, then we can set the current state of the present philosopher to eating. That means he will start eating now if all of these conditions are true. So he will be eating and after he eats, he will signal the self variable. So self is the condition variable that we are using here. So this means that he has now completed eating and he is telling that if there are any other philosophers that were waiting, they can now enter the monitor if they need. So that is why this signal is used. Okay, now let's say that there was a case where one of these conditions were not true. So the same philosopher I, it came to the test function. So let's say that one of the philosophers, let's say this one, his state was equal to eating. Then what will happen? This whole if condition will become false. So let's say that if state of I plus 4 mod 5 is not equal to eating is false. That means state of I plus 4 mod 5 is equal to eating. So at that time what will happen? this if condition will fail and if this if condition fails this two statements will not be executed 
and it will come back to the function from where it was called to this pickup function and here it checks if state of i is not equal to eating then self of i calls the wait operation. So here we see that this state of i will be set to eating only if all these conditions were true. So here one of the conditions were not true. So this thing was not executed. So state of i equal to eating is not set. That means state of i is still equal to hungry and not equal to eating. So what will happen? If state of i is not equal to eating, then self of i of wait. That means that present philosopher will have to wait. And he will have to wait until somebody will signal and then he'll later on get the chance to eat. So in the first case, when all these conditions were true, state of i is equal to eating is set here and self of signal is called. So if we come back to this function here after this test, it says if self of i is not equal to eating, is it true? It's not true because it was already set as eating here. So this is not true. So this will not be executed. So it is nothing complicated. Just think like this. If he got his chance to eat, then this condition will be false and he doesn't have to wait. But if he does not get his chance to eat here, then what will happen? His state is not in eating state and then he has to wait. So that is the only thing that means here. So that is what happens in the pickup and the test functions. So now after he finishes eating, he has to call the put down function for putting down his chopsticks. So in the put down function, what happens? State of i equal to thinking. So once he finishes eating, he is not in eating state now and he is also not in hungry state now. He just finished eating so he can go back to the thinking state. So his state is set to thinking and then here the test function is called for the two neighboring philosophers. If philosopher i was eating and finished eating, he puts down his fork and the test function is called for his two neighboring philosophers. So for the philosopher at his right and for the left, the test functions will be called. And the test functions will be called for let's say the first one here and it will go here and it will check if the neighboring philosophers are not eating and also if that particular philosopher for whom this test function is called is hungry then he can also eat now and then this same procedure will continue and let's say that this test function was called but this particular philosopher here is not hungry then what will happen these things will not be executed and we'll come back here and the same test will be done for the other philosopher who was at his other side. So even for that same philosopher, this condition will be checked. And if he is hungry and if his right and left philosophers are not eating, then he can eat. And if he was not hungry, then it will just come out of this. So here we see that there is a testing going on for all the philosophers again and again. So when one philosopher finishes eating, he will go to the thinking state. And then for the philosophers at his left and right, these test functions are run again so that if they want to eat, they will also be able to eat. So that is what happens here. So in semaphores, we saw that when all the philosophers get hungry at the same time, they all picked up their left chopsticks. Then all of them are left without the right chopsticks and it leads to deadlock. But in this monitor solution, we see that that will not happen. Because when a philosopher is hungry, first a test is made in order to check if the left and right chopsticks are available or not. And only after that, the philosopher will be allowed to eat. And also after he finishes eating, we are testing for the other philosophers on his left and right if they are hungry or not. So this will keep on happening and it will not lead to deadlock. And we also said that only one process will be allowed in a monitor at a time. So when one process is executing all this, no other processes will be allowed to enter this monitor. Hence, we see that this is a deadlock free solution. Okay, so now we have discussed about the pickup function, the put down function and the test function. So the only thing that was left out is the initialization code. So this actually I should have said in the beginning, this is nothing but we are just initializing the initial states of all the philosophers. So here the monitor is there and then initially we assume that all the philosophers are in the thinking state. So here we run a loop from zero to Five, and we are setting all the states of all the philosophers to the thinking state. So this is just for initializing all the states to thinking state in the beginning. And after that, when any philosopher gets hungry, when he wants to eat, he'll be calling the pickup, then the test. And after he finishes eating, he'll be putting down. So this is how the monitor solution is offered for the dining philosophers problem. So we see that it is much better than semaphores and here there will be no deadlock and that is for sure. With that we have come to the end of monitors and we see that this is a good solution to the synchronization problem and with this example of this dining philosophers problem and how it is solved, I hope it is clearer to you about how these monitors are designed and how the monitors work. 
So I hope this lecture was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.